it's my pleasure to introduce today's great panelist of speakers. Kevin Grover is the Geospatial Techn Technology Leader and in Innovation of the Innovation Office of Stantec. His expertise is primarily focused on all things reality capture from terrestrial laser scanning, SLAM, photogrammetry, and drones. At Stantec, his goals are to increase the ease, ease of use of reality capture data for internal staff of design projects and for clients such as value-added services. Kevin Oakley is the um, MBA CM of BIM and the Senior VDC Manager of Playco. Kevin facilitates the transition between design and construction and helps navigate the process from design intent into constructability. He works directly with the construction team to provide comprehensive coordination of every system being modeled in the building prior to installation. He also provides reality capture deliverables that will expedite the building process inform the job site team of all relevant issues, and assist in the handover to the owner. He has eight years of experience in the design-build world and has been the VDC lead on projects spanning the institutional, medicinal, and laboratory industries. Tomislav Zygo is AIA, but he is the VP of VDC of Clayco. And over the past two deco decades, Tomislav has been an advocate of digital technology implementation as a researcher, designer, and researcher's designer, and over the past six years as a designer builder. His experience includes work in the vanguard of BIM methodology implementation on large healthcare, institutional, and industrial projects, research work in the fields of building performance analysis, optimization and use of mobile and immersive technology, and mentorship positions in a number of local and national architectural firms during their transition towards BIM adoption. Currently, he leads Clayco's VDC department and teaches at Washington University in St. Louis. Mark Lavelle, Jr. is the senior VDC technical leader of SSOE. Mark leads development and implementation of new technologies at SSOE Group since 2007. At SSOE Group, he engaged he engages in Fortune 500 companies on how to use technology to drive and change innovation in construction projects. Tim Barnes is the Senior BIM and Visualization Specialist at Architecture 49, Inc. Tim Barnes is, the, uh, is based in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. He has 10 years of experience in the AEC industry, with most of those centered around technology, and specifically data capture. His focus is mainly on point cloud projects, point clouds, excuse me, photogrammetry, and using that data in innovative ways to ensure successful BIM projects. Tim believes in pushing the use of new processes and technology to create deliverables in a more cost-effective and efficient ways. David Avella is a design technology specialist with HOK Architects and is based in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. He combines hands-on construction background with formal architectural training and leadership experience. He possesses extensive knowledge of AEC business and has covered a great variety of projects and multiple roles, completing 15 years of experience preparing and building architectural designs successfully delivered with superior quality. And lastly, Dominique Poliquin is the CEO of Sintu US Incorporated. Dominique is one of the co-founders of Sintu, a company delivering, excuse me, a company developing Sintu Cloud a reality data management and collaboration platform for the digital twin industries. He is the CEO of Sintu US Incorporated and runs the product management and business development for the company. Before co-founding Sintu, Dominique held several positions including product management and business development at Autodesk in the reality solutions recap team. Dominique joined Autodesk in 2008 through the acquisition of RealViz a company that he co-founded and managed as the CEO for 10 years. RealViz photogrammetry technology was successfully integrated into several Autodesk projects, including 123B Catch, Auto, Autodesk Recap, and Autodesk Memento. Thank you all so much for joining us today. With that, Dominique, I'll turn it over to you. So uh, thank you again for the introduction. I guess you can see my slide, right? Uh, I will start by a quick introduction of Sintu Cloud and then uh, lead the stage to our uh, guest uh, customers today. Uh, so a few words about Sintu Cloud. Sintu Cloud is a platform that will 
make your laser scan fully cloud compatible. And by making them cloud compatible, they become shareable, distributable, uh, viewable from any anywhere at any time. And this is one of the one of the many value propositions for the platform. So uh, we started selling Cinto Cloud about 12 to 18 months ago, and we are proudly serving more than 100 companies worldwide, mostly in North America, but also customers in the UK, in France, Nordic countries, but also in Australia, New Zealand, and even in Japan. And they have uploaded one, uh, up to 1 billion square foot, a square feet of laser scan data so far to the platform, meaning more than 500,000 laser scan, terrestrial laser scan uh, to the platform. So from uh, various uh, construction sites, uh, building spaces, uh, factories, plants, oil rigs, something like that. So very happy with the growth. On the core technology behind is the capability to turn point cloud into a 3D mesh. Okay, this uh, point cloud to mesh is uh, is a very uh, highly um, um, developed technology over the, over the last 20 years. So uh, this mesh that we do produce will be highly streamable in a web browser, uh, the same way Netflix would stream high resolution videos in a browser as well. So people would call us a Netflix for 3D data for this very reason. Uh, good news when you do this uh, point cloud to mesh transformation is that this will make your 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 your, your scan data 10 to 20 times 20, 10 to 20 times smaller in size, so making it much easier to upload to the cloud. Okay, but very good news as well is that we retain the uh, the accuracy of the source scan. We retain the project information of the structure of the project, so we can retrieve back the source point cloud in its original form. And this is a pattern we have for this technology. Uh, so the workflow, uh, having seen to cloud as a center, making the connection between the field and the office, is that we will take your laser scan after they have been registered uh, using Autodesk Recap Pro or Faro Scene or Leica Cyclone. Uh, so we we'll take your data as a structure RCP E57 or FLS, and we will run locally uh, on your computer a software called Scene to Connect that will do this point cloud to mesh transformation. So everything uploaded to the cloud will be mesh-based, and we will be uh, streaming over the web uh, browser. Now, if you need to distribute the data back to your uh, office space or on, on your desktop apps, uh, you have several options here. You can do that as a unified mesh, uh, either as OBJ, STL, or FBX, or you can also do the inverse transformation mesh to point cloud in order to get back either a unified E57, RCP, RCS, or a structure E57 or RCP. Of course, with the platform, you can produce uh, measurements, annotations, issues that can be exported as BCF. Uh, you can uh, create a report in PDF. You can also share, uh, uh, we have a shared viewer that you can share uh, with your team members or your owners or your, your customers. Connecting uh, BIM uh, CentoCloud to BIM 360, you can pull uh, IFCs or Revit or Navisworks files or even 3D DWG files and overlay uh, those uh, BIM models over the scan in the CentoCloud viewer and then detect issues that you can push back uh, soon to BIM 360 again, or you can also sync and push to BIM track, which is one of the key workflows we do provide. Uh, so this is a, a quick demo uh, that has been recorded of the platform. So I'm now in Cinto Cloud using Microsoft Edge as a web browser. You can also use Chrome or Firefox. And these are my projects in my demo account, which I can view through thumbnails uh, via a list or on a map. Uh, so let me select one of those projects in which I have already uploaded uh, 54 uh, scans that are Faro scans, uh, Leica scans, or even ZNF scans previously registered in Autodesk Recap Pro. So let me show you uh, one of scan as an example. This is a ZNF bubble view or panoramic image, which I can now play in the 3D view. And the first thing that will be displayed going into the 3D view will be this 2D panoramic image, which was turned into a 3D model with colors attached to each vertex, which you can see now. And by removing color from the 3D mesh, you will really see what Cintus technology is all about. 
This is a surface mode where you can really see what has been captured by the laser beam independently from the RGB sensor. So if you look at this from the 3D RGB or 2D panoramic image mode, uh, you will see almost nothing. But switching to the 3D surface, you really see every single detail for the geometry that has been captured. And of course, the higher the density of your scan, the higher the density of your mesh. So let me switch to another vantage point like this one to see the mesh trimming happening, and you will get the very finest level of detail if you zoom in. So this shows what the technology can do for you. It will reveal details in your scans that you have probably never seen before, and it makes the data much easier to interpret. So you can use this uh, surface mode or any other 3D display mode to take measurements, uh, picking the exact 3D points that you want. And then you can, which you can also save in a context, with a context. You can also create uh, annotations, which can be notes, private notes, or issues. And let me show you other display modes, like uh, this uh, height map, for which we will colorize a mesh based on the z-axis. That could be used to give you a good sense of your floor flatness. Another one is a uh, X-ray vision mode. And this one will be useful when you switch from the scan to scan navigation to the 3D navigation. You can now see the whole project with, on the X-ray display will let you see the scan layout through the walls. You can also now use a crop tool uh, to create any section along the X, Y, or Z axis or to isolate on the equipment or area. You can always change the display settings to have a better sense of what you're doing. You can then adjust your crop as much as you want and then save your crop. So saving your crop will allow you to share it with your team members and export it as either a point cloud or as a mesh. The point cloud will require this mesh to point cloud inverse transformation to produce an E57 RCP or RCS file. But you can also create a unified mesh by taking the best uh, contribution from each scan. So you can select the density of your mesh, such as one vertex every centimeter in this case. You can also select the mesh format between SBX, OBJ, or STL. And we use uh, cloud computing to go very fast computing this unified mesh that you will then be able to download from your data tab to use it for modeling or clash detection in your desktop apps. Another uh, good example of what you can do with this platform is a, this project, which is a courtesy of our friends at TruePoint Laser Scanning in Toledo, Ohio. Here we have a project that not only has one, about 100 scans, but also a BIM model, which is a Revit model in this case. And to upload the BIM model to Cinto Cloud, you have two options, either upload on IFC from your disk or connect to your BIM360 Docs account to pull IFCs, Revit, or Navisworks in the, uh, Navisworks in the NWC or NWD, and also even 3DWG for, uh, files. So now when I go to the 3D view, I will get the BIM model and the scans. Uh, the BIM model is now uh, downloading, while the scans are streamed in real time based on your camera position. So now I can switch to the scan mode. Those scans don't have any color, so we display the intensity. So let me switch to the surface mode. So here now you have the scan and beam overlaid on display from the same exact viewpoints. What you want to do next at this stage is use a comparison tool to select and compare to compare the scans to the beam model. Then I have the visual diff tool that creates a heat map based on the differences between your eyes built and your design. So everything in red here is data coming from the laser scans that is not in the beam model. The goal is to visually detect issues. For example, uh, you will see here that there is a door 
that is completely red. So it's probably missing in the BIM model. And in order to check that, I will go to the visual check tool. And then I can play with the transparency slider. I move it to the far left, and then I can see my scanned data corresponding to my as-built conditions. If I move my slider to the right now, I have the BIM model, and you can see that the door is missing here. So what you may want to do next is to document this issue by adding an annotation at this exact 3D point, and this will be called an issue, to which you can attach a name, label, severity parameter, a due date, text, photo, video, PDF, or a link to a database. You can even assign it to a team member, and then you create the annotation, which you save with a screenshot on the contact. So these annotations will be either sync or pushed to BIMTrack, one of the leading platforms for BIM coordination. They will soon be pushed to BIM360 as well, or you can already export them as a BCF file. So BCF means uh, BIM collaboration format. You can also export a PDF, selecting uh, from the labels, the users, on the activities, what you want to put in this PDF. So using BCF, uh, you will be able then to import those files in Revit or Navisworks with the exact geolocation for model coordination. Uh, so this is what I wanted to show to you today, and I now leave the stage to Kevin at Stantec to tell us why and how he uses CintoCloud today. Kevin? Perfect, thanks very much, Dominique. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay today. So no, thank you very much for the opportunity to present here today on behalf of Stantec. So I'm going to chat a little bit today about uh, why we've uh, chosen to use Cintu as kind of a partner in this space for our reality capture hosting. So just a bit of background on our company. Um, we're a 22,000 person um, global design firms. So we're involved with all kinds of architectural engineering applications for buildings, environmental infrastructure, um, you know, wastewater treatment plant facilities, all kinds of things that we're involved with in our firm. Um, as far as my background, I'm actually a land surveyor, so we've been involved with uh, terrestrial LIDAR scanning, as well as drones, slam systems, 360 camera platforms for many years. Um, so we've got about 15 terrestrial scanners company-wide and a mix of Pharaohs and Leicas, but I think the challenge is we've also deal with a lot of third-party data from other organizations, so we have a lot of information we're always trying to deal with, manage, filter, and use kind of for our design um, verification and, and workflows. So. What we were looking for, I guess, in a platform, specifically in a web hosting platform for point clouds, is some ways that we can actually bring data in and share out to design teams. But one of the main priorities was terrestrial scan data was being our main priority. That's been a lot of the bread and butter that we use that we do as a technology from the collection side of things, uh, mostly just down to it's very precise. It integrates well with our survey collection methodology. Um, we can, you know, quantify a lot of the data accuracy out of it. So that's kind of what we were looking for as our main priority for our hosting platform. Um, one of the other big ones, I guess, to us is also a bit of a vendor agnostic platform. Um, we tend to, like I said, use a variety of hardware applications. We use a lot of different software applications. We try to integrate with, you know, the Bentley stack of tools, Esri, Autodesk, and everything. So we're always trying to find something that plays nicely with others. Um, so that's one of the things that was kind of the, uh, one of our key drivers for a, a data sharing platform. One of their critical things is how we basically pay for a solution like this as well. Um, one of the big things for us is having a more volume-based price structure. Um, a lot of platforms are user-based, which are kind of problematic in a lot of respects when we've got such a large organization and we want to share data to more people in our firm. So we're looking for something we can actually integrate with project and tie back to all of the other usage costs that go along with the project. Data sharing is critical as well because that's the whole point of having a platform as well. Point clouds are always locked, you know, under lock and key with a lot of software. They're challenging to get out there. They're large data volumes. So having that data sharing capability is key. Um, and then the other one, cloud security. Um, this one I can't stress enough in our organization as well as we're looking for something that keeps our data and our clients' data as secure as possible. We'll jump into some next slides and we'll talk a little bit more about the data security side of things of why we chose Sentu as well. So what we're looking for here is uh, a number of things that we kind of look for as a company. Um, Microsoft Azure um, is a huge one. We're a big Azure shop in our organization. So we're always trying to find solutions that integrate with that existing stack of tools. Um, so also integrations with things like Active Directory, 
Um, so basically get all of our user authentication all built with our Active Directory structure just to allow more control and security over who has access to the data. Um, user permission management, all of these things are very important. Even ways to publicly share, because that is kind of necessary for us that we want to get data in the hands of whether it's for marketing purposes or to clients or third parties. So we want to have ways that we can actually share in different manners. Um, one of the other big ones that we've got in our company as well is kind of different, some of the different compliance things for ISO and SOC 2 is one of the big ones. Um, this is actually an, a process that's underway with Sintu, which is music to our ears as an organization and to our CIO and all of our IT infrastructure that these are all big main reasons of what we're looking for. Um, the other one I didn't mention is the whole data residency side of things as well, which is at the top. That's a big one. Working on global design projects, we need ways that we can save data local to the country that we're operating in. So these are all things that Sintu can offer as a platform. So one of the next things that I kind of dive into, again, maybe not as elegant as some of the things that Dominique was showing, but another reason what we're using for is just the data sharing power of the Sintu application. So we can define project permissions at, or I guess permissions to users at the project level. So if we've got multiple folks internally to Stantec, if we've got clients, if we've got third parties that we work with, we can actually control and customize full user access to the platform. Um, a lot of the things in the bottom right corner there is you can see the screenshot of the different permissions levels that can be set. So all of these different permission levels are fantastic. So we can control who has access to upload and get their hands on more of the data to, from an edit perspective, all the way down to just having the ability to view in a browser. Um, as well as everything in between, from the annotations, the measuring functionality, downloading, meshing, all of those things are all extensionable tools that are kind of available in here. And then the custom of a customizable permissions all are all tied to our Active Directory integration, which we have operational. So these are some things that just make the platform a lot easier for us to use within our organization. Then there's times when uh, we do want to actually allow a bit more of a public share to our data and not fully public, but I mean just public via shareable links. So this is where Sintu has some fantastic applications for getting this data in the hands of basically, you know, the, the layman. I always look at technology and organization that it needs to be easy to use. Always like to find tools that, you know, are simple for even my parents to use. Um, those are some of the key features that we look for in how ease, um, easy Sintu is used to use in our environment. Some of the things for sharing, we can set passwords on the links. You can accept expiry dates for data links. All of these things are very necessary that we can actually share data out for a set period of time, control who has access to what, um, as well as some things for different branding, um, you know, to kind of throw our company logo and that kind of thing to as well. Um, the other key piece, piece at the bottom, up there, you can see different ways to share. Um, share by a barcode, by a QR code, or just a direct project link. So lots of different ways we can get this in the hands of people on desktop as well as mobile. Um, that's the other key feature of Sintu as well, is that we can actually access all of this data streaming over an internet connection on a mobile device. So lots of great ways to get the data in the hands of folks. And then Dominique did touch on this as well. This is actually one of the other main integration pieces that is uh, kind of music to our ears and, and things that we're really trying to push as an organization within Stantec as well. Um, you know, like I said, we're partnered with Bentley, Autodesk, a lot of large, I guess, in Esri are kind of our main software vendors that we do a lot of work with. So specifically on um, the Autodesk front is one of the major integrations that we are really excited about where Sintu is at and where they're also headed. So we're able to bring in all of this rich point cloud data into the Sintu environment and visualize it for entire project teams without having to download anything direct to their desktop. Um, then what we can do is, like Dominique mentioned, is we can start integrating IFC data sets, just local imports from there, or the BIM 360 integration where we can start bringing in Revit files, DWG, Navisworks Navar files, and bring those back into the Sintu environment and using them to clash detect, validate, just basic visualization. So the smaller image on the bottom right there is how we can start visualizing where these as-built conditions fit in with our design. And again, the benefit of this is it's all done in a design environment. Um, if anybody's worked with point clouds over the years, they know that they're not the easiest things to work with unless you've got the right proper tools, proper hardware. So this is really a way that we can streamline ease of use and opening up access to more people. Um, so some things like the visual difference, visual checks, those are all great features to have. 
The other piece I want to toss in here too is some of the VR efforts that they've got underway. Um, so they do have the ways that we can visualize all of this in a VR environment and browser via the Oculus Quest or the HTC Vive headset. So lots of great ways that we can just open the data up to the masses to really have people leverage what they can do with reality capture data. So that's it from my end. Um, now I'm going to turn this over to Tim Barnes at Architecture 49 and Dave Vivella at HOK, and they're going to kick off of how they use the platform. Thank you, Kevin. Um, as Kevin said, my name is Tim Barnes. I'm with Architecture 49. Uh, so I just want to give a big thanks to Spire 3 d uh, and to Sintu for asking us to uh, present, uh, and Leslie, our host, as well. So thank you, guys. Um, so yeah, a little bit about me. I'm a senior BIM and visualization specialist with Architecture 49. Uh, my basis is in data capture and visualization uh, and using all that kind of data in unique ways and uh, getting people to digest that data. Um, David and I's presentation might be a little bit different from our co-presenters, as in David and I are working on one project, which uh, for me is definitely not uh, usual in my career. Um, we're working on a large historical renovation project, which we can't actually show images from. So most of our Sintu stuff is we're not allowed to put in the presentation, so it's a little bit different. But we are going to explain some challenges of why uh, using Sintu has helped us so much on this uh, this project, which is going to span the better part of a decade. Um, so a little bit about my company, Architecture 49. We're a Canadian-based firm. Uh, we have nine offices across Canada. Uh, we specialize in architectural interior design and landscape services. Um, a big philosophy at A49 is about sustainability. Uh, I mean, our architects are green advocates, and we are lead professionals, um, and we're always looking for ways to protect and preserve our uh, national environment and heritage. Um, even our, our headquarters in uh, Manitoba in Canada is a was certified lead platinum in 2009 um so that's uh that's kind of what we look for and move forward to uh to go in the future so uh, i'll just uh, throw it over to my counterpart david uh so david there you go uh thank you team um hi everyone um uh first of all thank you uh Sintu and spark 3 for having us here today um again my name is david avella i'm design technology specialist at hok my background is in architecture and construction, and um, over the past five years, I have been uh, working on reality capture technologies like laser scanning, photogrammetry, and handheld scanning to uh, provide expertise on documentation and reconstruction of existing buildings for design and, and as-built purposes. Um, a little bit of about HOK. HOK is a global design, architecture, engineering, and planning firm. Um, our 1,600 people collaborate across a network of 24 offices on three continents. Also, HOK possesses a strong background in sustainability and design technology support to deliver building solutions in fields like transportation, sport, education, and workplace justice, um, anything else. Um, about the, the project, um, specifically, um, uh, where we are implementing Sintu, as Dean mentioned, we're working right now in a historical renovation project that contains a huge heritage component plus multiple partners and stakeholders. Um, we're sorry here again because we cannot uh, put any multimedia on this presentation due to the security of the project, but we basically have a lot of information and we need to deliver that information effectively to all of the corners of the project. This is a challenge that requires integration and open platform that allow us to include members from different networks, break silos and of data due to the proprietary system files. And I pass to my partner team to the next slide, please. Thanks, David. Um, yeah, so why why point clouds? Why laser scanning in general? Uh, this is an argument that uh, throughout my career has gotten a lot easier as time has gone by. Um, you know, there's a lot of skepticism at first, but uh, now the technology is really picked up uh, and running, and it's 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 kind of like a commonplace workflow now. 
Um, so, I mean, the reason we want to use it on this project is uh, really because of the capturing the building in its totality. So that means measurements, that means visual data, and that means geolocation, et cetera. I mean, all those things need to be captured and they need to be accurate. Um, the speed of capture with terrestrial data, some people may not think it's quick, um, but for our process, it, it's extremely quick uh, when you compare it to like the old handheld measurements and things like that, um, and just getting that people uh, the data to people quickly, and Sintu is a big part of that. Um, so the challenges we face with this kind of new technology uh, as challenges, I guess, anybody who's done data capture here has faced um, sharing, you know, terabytes of point cloud data. I mean, we were at 15 terabytes plus. I think the next slide we say 14, but we've already surpassed that. Um, how do you secure that amount of uh, storage space and how do you protect those files? Um, how do you show all that scan data together in one place? Uh, I don't know if anybody's had that problem with different software, especially Windows-based software, um, where you had to load things separately and everybody has their own licenses. Um, Sintu helps us with that. Uh, and the communication between that data, I mean, sending notes through email about something that's visual on your screen, it doesn't really work when you're trying to infer someone's text. Uh, and where can we host that data? So we'll explain that a little bit later, but that was a big part of our project. Um, so yeah, if we want to go to the next side, there we go. Uh, so collaboration. So like I said, um, the viewing at once of terabytes of data, everybody on our uh, project needs access to it. Uh, we're, you know, 250, 300 users now um, using this, and I've never experienced a great way to get everybody access to that data at once, and Sintu definitely does that great. And not only can they do that, but they can comment back and forth to each other by sharing measurements, by um, pointing someone to, you know, a specific part of the point cloud, a specific part of the building. And whether it's even to do with the point cloud or it's just to do with the building, they can communicate easily back and forth with each other. Um, the integration of BIM track, or, uh, yeah, BIM track, excuse me, um, to bring up issues and things like that has been uh, uh, a great point uh, that Sintu has brought across and that we uh, are planning to implement uh, in the near future uh, because we are using BIMTRAC on the project. Uh, so David, if you want to go ahead. Yeah, uh, so for Project Lifecycle, uh, we take advantage of the face feature in Sintu to store the scans as it is captured in terms of time. It means we have an initial phase of existing as phone condition and then when the demolition phase is in place, we go back and scan the same area. So we can we can have at some point a timeline of the construction process. Another good feature that we are using in the folder is the folder structure called Warsons. It saves the scans per folder in a drop-down hierarchy like Windows Explorer. So we can we can isolate specific areas and control access by users. That helps a lot with the navigation and loading times. And more importantly, it, it's a good way to organize the point clouds. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? So another uh, good feature is the unified mesh creation. Um, accurate representation and usability of the files in multiple platforms are important factors for this project. And the feature in Sintu to create meshes out of point clouds help us to integrate different visual rendering software like Unreal Engine, uh, Enscape, Twinmotion, and authoring softwares like Rhino or Houdini. And as a note, the, the meshes are real reference using the point cloud's coordinate system. So this, this feature is very important for us in terms of uh, the overlap that we need with asset extraction from other sources. Pass to. Yeah, thank you. Um, so the last one is short and sweet. I mean, a big part of the uh, storing data on this project by our client was that uh, certain data cannot be hosted by third parties, but certain data that can needs to be hosted within Canada. Um, so, I mean, something we experience in Canada sometimes with different softwares is, you know, they're either U.S.-based or they're U.K.-based, Europe-based. Um, it was nice to see that Sintu allowed us to host that data in Canada. Um, not only for the fact that it's Canadian, but it, it speeds up uh, accessing that data as well. Um, so yeah, so that was a big part of uh, of the initial sign up with Sintu. It's it's kind of become lesser, but it's nice that uh, they give you that option to host on different servers for sure. So yeah, we just want to say thank you on behalf of myself and David. Um, Sintu has been a integral part of this project and will be going forward. 
Uh, like I said, terabytes of data and many more terabytes to come. Uh, so we appreciate uh, all the work that they're doing there and the openness of Sintu to work with us. Uh, just getting feedback, incorporating that feedback all the time. Uh, I can't speak highly enough to that. Um, so yeah, so uh, I'll throw it over to uh, Mark LaBelle of SSOE. Uh, so yeah, take it away, Mark. Thank you, uh, Tim and David. Uh, very enlightening usage uh, and why you uh, chose the Sintu engine. And uh, again, just like my predecessors, want to thank the SPAR staff, uh, Sintu staff, Dominique and Rob, uh, as well as uh, kind of give a shout out to all those that are uh, taking time out of their day. I know we're all very busy um, to learn why this platform um, really could have a, a, a very positive impact in how not just a lot of us who do reality capture for a day-to-day -day part of our life, but those that don't understand the technology as well as we do can really enrich the process of construction. So really want to really appreciate the fact that there's a lot. I've been watching about 100-plus attendees uh, coming to listen to what we have to say here. So uh, my name is Mark LaBelle. I'm with SSOE Group. I happen to be working out of our Toledo, Ohio office, which is our corporate headquarters. And what we're kind of showing here with this map is uh, we are uh, an organization that does business all across the globe. Uh, while we do have a large uh, portion of our headcount in uh, North America, we do business, uh, as you can see, in the red countries. And we kind of change or, or do work, as, uh, to, as some say, like following the sun, right? I mean, our projects have very tight scheduled uh, timelines. And sometimes the only way to be able to do that is to be able to work on it for 24 hours a day. And that's how you meet uh, the criteria of getting it done as fast as possible with, you know, utmost uh, attention to quality. But what that does uh, present is some uh, is some challenges around of how we ship the data around. So one quick uh, point before we go into how we do ship the data around um, SSOE, a lot of the work that we do is focused on the industrial sector. Uh, we do business in healthcare and education as well, but our, our primary bread and butter is that uh, industrial sector of, uh, of business. And the tagline we like to talk about is, you know, if you've eaten a bowl of cereal, if you've played with a uh, smartphone tablet or used a computer to do your daily job, if you've driven in a car, uh, you appreciate that your business or home stays warm or cool because of the insulation and the roofing material, we design the factories that build those products. So while we're not necessarily the household uh, architecture and engineering juggernaut mega name, um, we do rest assured that uh, we feel we provide a lot of value to the working world and uh, the products that everybody does use. So we'll go ahead to the next slide and talk a little bit about our challenge, as uh, mentioned, uh, being an international company, because as the predecessors in this uh, presentation mentioned, laser scan data sets are very, very large. So how do we chase the sun in the work um, at SSOE and make sure we're doing that with all this laser scan data? So we have, uh, since 2015, had a custom-built solution that we did internally, which was foundationally built on a hub and spoke. So all reality capture data, whether we did it ourselves with our own scanning equipment, um, third-party vendors did the scanning for us, uh, a client already had the data on a hard drive, all that data came back to our main data center in Toledo. And then we had a service level agreement that within 24 to 48 hours, all that data would replicate each night from Toledo into all the other offices across the globe. Now, that uh, still is pretty uh, rock solid performance, especially if you look at the dark days of 2015 with the technology available and how large that data set is. Um, now, even more than ever, with a lot more people working from home and more globally distributed uh, workforce than we've ever had, uh, that's not um, going to work in, in the current world. So we were already looking at Sintu prior to this issue. I mean, this is, we've, we're now into phase two, of what we're calling our pilot or implementation program with Sintu. The first phase was over the past 12 months, just understanding how to use it and getting it better. Uh, we worked with Dominique prior to that and team just getting, uh, let's say, kicking the tires before we even went into phase one. Um, but now we're in the full kind of bread and butter of what we're doing, and we'll talk about that in a few moments. Again, one of the main focuses of SSOE's business is brownfield projects. Um, so we're going in and we're doing, you know, gut renovations. We're doing additions to existing facilities and tying into those uh, utilities and, you know, processes. Uh, so laser scanning is kind of a foundation of what we need to drive uh, success on our projects. Again, we've uh, 
kind of talk about this, but we rely on third-party transfers. Um, so sometimes it's a hard drive mailed to us, but a lot of times it's through Dropbox, Box, you know, a lot of different, right, SharePoint, FTP, um, all have their positives and negatives. Um, but, again, it's, it's um, you know, there's latency built into that. <clears throat> One of the things that uh, I will mention at SSOE is we are primarily an Autodesk shop. Uh, we do use some of the other tools from time to time, but Autodesk is our main platform for design software. Uh, we use Revit, Civil 3D, Plant 3D, still 2D AutoCAD, uh, AutoCAD Electrical, so pretty much everything under the uh, under the sun of Autodesk's offerings for design. Um, we do use it on our projects, um, and we are hosting uh, all of our project data going forward in BIM 360, but the problem is, is you still can't view point clouds. You can only use it to transfer. And uh, one of the other things that uh, – we'll note here is we've scanned over 700 projects since 2015, um, again, through the multiple different uh, uh, methods of our own equipment as well as third-party vendors. And what we are seeing there, and Mr. Vanderbeek is showing there is a, in his deep sadness, is um, there are projects that we are, let's say, accidentally rescanning because we've, we've baked it into our process so much and our clients do tend to value that highly, that, that fresh as-built data. Um, but because of we have 700 projects and because we are on a custom-built solution that's, you know, requires um, roughly 20 terabytes of storage in each of these office locations, uh, we have roughly somewhere between 120 to 140 terabytes of data just in reality capture. We can't host that all in all those offices. So what we're finding is we're rescanning it because we have to archive projects and people are losing that knowledge that, well, there wasn't construction that touched it. So... Not a bad thing that we're rescanning, but it is wasted effort. So uh, I tend to like to talk about project examples. This is where people can understand really the benefits of the system. Um, so right here you're looking at a stack. This is an elevation view, just plain old orthographic 2D view. And this is five stories of a, a food and consumer product facility that you're looking at here. So um, we just turned on the X-ray mode just to be able to show how equipment is uh, – um, stacking up. So, so for most people, this is pretty tough to see, um, but there is uh, a piece of equipment that's going over three floors, um, but we also have to land it down to the bottom two floors uh, where they're basically getting it out to shipping. So some statistics about this particular project and why Sintu is valuable. Um, we did uh, 75 scans initially on this particular project to do design and engineering. Um, we use BIM 360 for our design hub, um, and we use the connection from Sintu to be able to, uh, not, live isn't the correct word, but update on a regular basis the Navisworks models from BIM 360 into the Sintu environment. Um, in a few moments, we'll talk about why that's very powerful. Uh, at the time of this slide being prepared, we had three companies collaborating on this particular project. We are now up to six, which is SSOE, the client, and four um, four different, depending on the scope that they're working on, and this is based on permissions that uh, others were talking about, very valuable, uh, four different equipment uh, vendors um, that are in these models now. And also we're using the mesh export uh, for equipment detailing. So go ahead and transition to the next slide. And there will be a video that we're playing. This is very similar to kind of what Dominique showed earlier. Um, this is why the equipment and the meshing is very, very powerful um, for those equipment vendors. So a lot of them do work in SOLIDWORKS and Gintia. Um, they do struggle to consume point clouds in the way that the typical AEC software suite does. So what this video is showing is we created a really quick crop. Now, of course, because of confidentiality, I can't show any of the equipment, so I'm just showing a stack of columns across five floors to kind of uh, highlight the feature. Um, what we did is went through and created the mesh. Uh, what we found is the one centimeter uh, setting is um, pretty much the gold standard for what we need in equipment design software, such as a SOLIDWORKS or a CATIA. Um, and then you can take that out to an OBJ, uh, PLY, um, FBX, and STL file. That then goes ahead and, pro, you know, kind of does its work back in in the cloud. Um, the user then in the uh, robotics company in this particular example that did the crop, uh, they get an email when it's available and ready, and then they download that mesh, and they're off and running, right? They still use Sintu to take measurements, um, and they find it very valuable and very efficient um, to do it from that particular interface, but they also have an ability to now coordinate 
the reality capture data that was taken by us or a third party uh, provider and put it directly into their software. Now they don't have to remodel all of their equipment that they're trying to basically put uh, either, you know, maybe some new conveyors around, uh, maybe some new guarding uh, and safety measures depending on what the scope is. So uh, again, this process has been extremely valuable um, in getting everybody engaged um, in what was pretty much almost an impossible measure before because we were again shipping hard drives, managing third party transfers, all kinds of different software was required and it just didn't interact well. Uh, another project example that we're going to look at here, and this is just going to be a flat photo, uh, again, project stats, we have 2,100 scans and growing. Um, this particular project, I know we haven't highlighted too much in the, the platform, but there's this feature called work zones. Um, and what that is, it gives you the ability to do is, you know, kind of show smaller scopes of the project, and you can also kind of restrict permissions or access to that. So if you had one contractor, for example, that only needs to be working in the north end of a facility, you give them what would be called the north uh, work zone and only access to that where maybe the client and the main AE team gets access to everything. So those work zones are very valuable, not only in controlling smaller chunks of data uh, and streaming it to your computer, but also from a permission standpoint. Again, in this one, we're using the BIM360 connection to regularly kind of communicate back with the clients and people that don't have Navisworks, don't have, uh, you know, a terabyte of extra hard drive space to host um, all the reality capture data. Um, we, on this particular project, I think it's five. It could be more at this point because I'm not in tune with all the specifics on this project. And we have people working across three different uh, countries, Canada, the U.S., and Mexico, um, so, and there could be more, again, that have uh, been added to it. So, again, going and showing that depth and breadth of that particular um, platform is just giving people access in real time. So, what are the benefits and why are we standardizing it into um, at SSOE? Um, over the next few years, we can really start to reduce our uh, footprint of, you know, requiring, you know, changing out hardware at that 20 terabytes. And this, is, this isn't cheap 20 terabytes of storage, right? This is server class hardware. Um, lots of backups that are being written on-prem, uh, tapes, all of those things. There's a lot of money into that uh, type of uh, system. Um, the integration with BIM360 with the models as well as what Dominique talked about earlier uh, with the issues upcoming um, is very powerful for us as an organization. Uh, we're going to be able to host all of our projects that we've worked on in 2015 that make sense. Uh, because we are the prime uh, that does work in these facilities over and over again, having that historical, being able to tour uh, those facilities year over year is very valuable and being able to take measurements and plan projects with our clients um, and not just going back and, you know, having to call up uh, archives from yesteryear, uh, that availability will be very significant. Our benefits to our clients, um, no longer we delayed access to our projects. Um, huge, right? Because every time you talk about that hub and spoke, that takes a couple of days, and then we got to get a hard drive, and then we got to mail it out. You're talking maybe a week or two just because of the technology of yesteryear. Um, being able to get daily, um, next day, or even, you know, same day type of service is significant on some of these projects that we work on. Um, no software is required for the end user. And again, we work with a lot of Fortune 500 clients. These, these users' machines are very locked down. They're not allowed to install software huge, huge thing for us. So um, the only time they do need to install software, I will put the caveat behind that, is if they are uploading or downloading information from the Sintu environment. So if they wanted to download the laser scan data, if they want to download the mesh, then they do need to install small client. Um, and that mesh feature has been gold on a lot of the equipment stuff we've been working on. And it's even working for facilities and utilities uh, where we do a very small subsection and you can get some really tightly coordinated uh, like conduit banks, um, you got rows of conduit right up against the roof structure, uh, uh, a ceiling structure um, that's very hard to see in point clouds. Um, you can see clevis hangers, threaded rods. It's it's quite amazing um, what this uh, software is the, kind of enabling us to do. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to Thomas Waugh at Clayco, and again, appreciate everybody's uh, time uh, today. Uh, thank you, um, and uh, thank you, uh, to, you know, to and Spar for having us and um, giving us an opportunity to present on years of work that um, Clayco spent in um, reality capture space. Um, 
both um, Kevin and I um, have been part of this process for over 10 years, and during those 10 years, we had the pleasure of collaborating closely with both Dominique and Rob on in variety of their roles, and most recently, or past three or four years, um, collaborating through Synth Platform. Next, Next please. Um, I just want to share some insight uh, with our audience about who Clayco is and what do we do. Uh, Clayco is primarily defined as a real estate developer, design builder, and I would say the, the easiest way to describe Clayco is a turnkey solution for all of your uh, real estate needs. So basically, we see that project happens um, from start to finish, basically from financing all the way to the turnover. And one way of also describing Clayco is a vertically integrated company with many subsidiaries. And when you have this kind of level of integration, one of the imperatives is seamless data sharing. And um, since we started this process of reality capture, ability to share data was obviously an imperative within our organization, and also as an it also existed as an imperative when it comes to collaboration with all of our partners and projects that we deliver. Next slide, please. So the concept behind this slide is very simple. I think we've mentioned this quite a few times over the course of this presentation, but as our needs, as the client's needs grow, as, the, as we gather larger clients, our team and our expertise with scanning has grown as well. And so the need for programs like Sintu uh, to provide a solution that is all-encompassing and through the cloud and can provide data very quickly, uh, it's, it's, we've mentioned imperative, I think, a few times already, uh, it's, it's essential to how we're going to expand, how we're going to scale our services to our clients. Uh, and, and this chart kind of outlines uh, our growth. Uh, we should be actually updating it because since 2018, we procured three more scanners. So right now, all of our scanners are fully deployed across multiple Clayco jobs. Um, and um, both um, at the, both of our main offices, Chicago and St. Louis, um, are also conducting, conducting scanning in uh, tributary areas of those offices. I think it's kind of really important to mention that um, over the past several years, we experimented with a range of solutions that were more or less functional when it comes to delivering point clouds through um, worldwide web, web interface. Um, but none of the solutions came even close to CentOS flexibility. And um, just the fact that over the last 10 years, we roughly managed to accumulate some 50 terabytes of scanned data, which, you know, in all honesty, we didn't import all of the data to CentOS. This is still existing on our archive servers. But with CentOS, we see a clearer roadmap toward making this data being widely distributed and not necessarily managed in-house on our um, web servers as a, as a way of distributing this to our partners um, throughout our jobs. Um, what's really important to us as when we are executing our work either in the role of a designer or construction manager is accuracy of installation, accuracy of uh, execution. And when we are using reality capture data that is being gathered through unmanned aerial vehicles or through uh, terrestrial laser scanning, um, superimposing models and data in order to assure the accuracy of execution is extremely important. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as I mentioned, Playco is a vertically integrated company, and one of our sub-performing div divisions is our concrete division, where uh, scanning prior to pouring and after pouring is extremely important. Prior to pouring, we are scanning for accuracy of formwork placement, accuracy of rebar placement, um, 
and um, after scanning, we are always looking in analytical aspects of our scans, basically investigating for levelness and flatness, including plumless. Uh, and this is where we find Synthu platform to be extremely informative, not only when it comes to disseminating data that has been um, gathered throughout the scanning, but also for preliminary investigative work uh, prior to us actually delivering ASTM 1155 compliant reports on, um, on uh, quality of um, concrete that is being poured in place. Next slide. And as I mentioned before, and like anybody else on this call, um, Sintu is a very convenient way for us to engage our consultants, engage our teams, and um, share information in tightly controlled environment where permissions, uh, access of information, um, as well as uh, delineation of work based on areas or based on um, any kind of division of work that we uh, deem to be important for us can be easily translated into very comprehensive, very easy to use uh, interface. And the feedback we are getting from our teams is, is, is quite favorable. Basically, it convinced us that this is the way for us to disseminate data and utilize um, this novel approach that uh, enables fast exchange of information um, throughout our projects. Next. Uh, this is simply an example of uh, when we we mentioned the self-performing concrete service that we provide here at Clayco, utilizing the Sintu platform for the heat map, for flatness, and, and for any other sorts of imperfections or mitigation that is required on concrete or in certain zones. So uh, just simply utilizing those modules within Sintu, taking our contour maps that we generate, um, and, and providing them into the platform has been uh, paramount to, to a more streamlined uh, way of doing things here at Clayco. And it's really important to mention that, you know, throughout this process, especially over the past several years, by offering this flexibility, it was really easy to get a buy-in from our clients to include uh, reality capture as part of our final um, information handover. So. Um, most of most of Clayco projects where reality capture is being utilized um, are delivering progress scanning um, as we move along um, with our jobs, and this data is further down being shared with our clients. Um, obviously, Sintu is a great one-stop shop for everybody to have access to this data and ultimately um, guarantee that um, what's being built and the way it's being built will be captured um, and, um, if needed, compared to the modeling information that is also available through integration that our colleagues uh, mentioned several times um, throughout this presentation. And with this, uh, you know, again, thank you for giving us opportunity to uh, briefly um, explain how Clayco is using Sintu platform in conjunction with reality capture data. And needless to say, I think I don't think we need to reiterate all the advantages of Sintu. It's a great platform, and we are looking forward to further collaboration with Sintu team because what they proved over the past several years that they are extremely nimble and they are great listeners when it comes to uh, deploying new features and enhancing their platform even further. So um, we are just about at 12 o'clock, so unfortunately we don't have time to take questions live. If you do have questions, certainly still put them in the Q&A box. We'll make sure it gets over directly to our presenters um, in just a moment. 
Before logging off, I do want to thank you all again, not only for joining us today, but taking some time to thank each of our speakers, Kevin Grover of Stantec, Kevin Oakley and Thomas Lazigo of Clayco, Mark LaBelle of SSOE, Tim Barnes of Architecture 49, David Avella of HOK Architects, and of course, Dominique Poliquin of Sintu. It was a great way to not only see a lot of the variety of uses of this platform, but hear from different organizations. It was a great way to hear uh, why it provided value for your organization. So thank you all so much for taking time to be a part of today's presentation. Before we sign off, uh, I do have a, a few items to uh, go over. Stay tuned for a follow-up email to access the on-demand version of today's program. Um, we are always eager to hear your feedback as well. So after today's presentation, you'll also get a, a short survey um, when you log out. So please take a few minutes to, uh, to complete that. And then also, lastly, certainly don't hesitate to reach out to me directly to connect with me. I'm on LinkedIn. You, you can access my, uh, my email address on any of our websites that I've listed. Um, and certainly feel free to reach out for any additional content that we'll be providing throughout the rest of the year. Lastly, thank you again for taking the time to attend today's webinar and have a great rest of your day.